Today we're going to be talking about fusion energy, one of the most hyped up topics in physics. Fusion energy is how the sun produces energy. Stars like the sun produce energy by combining two atoms to form a single larger atom, releasing tremendous amounts of energy in the process. Scientists have been wanting to do the same thing on Earth because fusion energy is a very idealistic source of renewable energy. It is clean, it has no harmful emissions, and it can be potentially unlimited. But the biggest limitation in realizing this so far has been that fusion power requires enormous initial energy to power atoms to come together and fuse together. To do this, they have to overcome their innate ability to repel each other at close quarters and then they have to still be further pushed together to become a completely new element. The sun is currently converting hydrogen atoms to helium atoms by fusing hydrogen atoms together and those are the kind of conditions that we are trying to replicate here, what is found in the sun. The goal is to ultimately achieve the kind of energy that the sun puts out, of course, albeit at a much smaller scale. The National Ignition Facility at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in the US, which is a weapons testing facility, they have managed to try this out with a couple of atoms. They succeeded in heating a capsule consisting of a deuterium atom and a tritium atom to over 3 million degrees Celsius for about a millionth of a second on the 5th of December. Here, the deuterium and tritium act as fuels. These are the atoms that need to be combined or fused to produce a helium nucleus with two protons and two neutrons and releasing one high energy neutron from it, as well as a substantial amount of energy. Now to fuse these two atoms, energy is required. This was done by delivering 2.05 megajoules of energy to the atoms with the help of 192 high-precision lasers that targeted the capsule. The reaction produced 3.15 megajoules of energy output, which is more than a megajoule of gain. The input power delivered via lasers to kickstart the reaction was 2.05 and the output from the reaction was 3.15 megajoules. This is a definite energy gain and it is the first time that this has ever happened on Earth. So that's great news. Except it doesn't really end there. 2.05 megajoules was only the energy that was delivered to the atoms via the lasers. The scientists still needed electricity to charge the lasers and keep them running. That took an additional 300 megajoules. And the fusion reaction can continue only if it keeps getting energy, either from its own reaction or if lasers are constantly firing at it. In this experiment, the lasers powered on and off and the reaction was completed all in under a second. The output energy they got is almost nothing practically, although it is quite a significant step theoretically. The scientists and US government officials at the facility themselves say that although this is significant, the world is actually decades away from actually drawing electricity or commercializing fusion power. We do not have the tech for it, for sure, but we also don't understand all of the science to fully power such a device. This is not to say that we haven't tried or aren't trying. Today, there are several government-funded, dedicated international collaborative fusion research centers. There are fusion experiments that are either currently running or being built in at least 26 countries. We know that fusion reactions require conditions that are present in stars. What we use in nuclear reactors today is fission, which is the exact opposite. In fission, an atom is split and releases other atoms, which can be radioactive byproducts. Fission requires far less energy than fusion does. To replicate fusion conditions here on Earth, a reactor needs to maintain temperatures of over 150 million degrees Celsius, which is 10 times hotter than the center of the sun, and sustain these conditions for a long enough time to facilitate and continue the reaction and at extremely high pressures or compression. Under such conditions, gases do not remain gases, but become a completely different state of matter called plasma, which is superheated ionic gas. 
In some fusion reactors, the reactions are expected to take place inside this plasma. And such superheated plasma is contained using extremely powerful magnets so that the plasma doesn't touch the sides or the walls of the reactor or a chamber and melt it. Such facilities where plasma is contained with the help of extremely powerful magnets are called magnetic confinement facilities. And the most common design for such a facility is the donut-shaped tokamak. Among developments just this year with magnetic confinement, a reactor in South Korea reached temperatures of over 100 million Celsius for 30 seconds, as did a reactor in the UK. In China, a reactor reached temperatures of 70 million Celsius or five times hotter than the surface of the sun, but sustained it for 17 minutes. We even discussed this in another pure science video when this news broke out as China's artificial sun. To the contrary, the NIF experiment here at Lawrence Livermore used a different type of reactor that worked on the basis of inertial confinement, where the target, which is typically a pellet containing deuterium and tritium atoms, is bombarded with extremely high energy beams, such as with lasers. This high energy pushes these atoms together, creating a fusion reaction. There is no plasma involved in the process. There are fewer inertial confinement experiments and more magnetic confinement ones as the magnetic ones are considered more practical and more promising and less energy intensive. Among the ongoing fusion energy projects across the world, the largest is the ITER, an international fusion research mega project in southern France with over 12 collaborating countries including India. ITER is still under construction. In India too, we have running plasma experiments. In Gandhinagar at the Institute for Plasma Research, two experimental devices are currently running, the Aditya tokamak and the steady state superconducting tokamak. Both of these tokamaks are working on controlling plasma. In magnetic confinement facilities, such as these ones in Gandhinagar and ITER, getting plasma to sustain high heat and pressures for a few seconds in itself is considered a very major achievement in inertial confinement facilities even achieving break even or producing an equal fusion output energy as the input laser energy has been impossible so far until now of course Realizing fusion energy has been attempted at least since the 1950s and despite this week's progress, humanity is still quite far away from generating electricity from fusion. Ideally, fusion energy would require small amounts of fuel and produce extremely large amounts of energy. It will also release minimal nuclear waste and a fusion reactor should be able to shut down quickly. But as a species, we are nowhere close to realizing it. If we are lucky, this might happen in our lifetimes, but it seems extremely unlikely. So for now, it looks like a better alternative to harness energy from is still the fusion reactor in our skies that is powering all life on Earth today.